Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel XCN and Protein X. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk about overview of the trypsin in cell culture. So here I will discuss about the trypsin and the trypsinization in cell culture and also the uh, the background knowledge and some kind of theory uh, how this kind of trypsinization occurs. So I will talk in details about it. So stay tuned and watch this video till end. So let's begin. So first you need to know that how does cell attach to the bottom of the cell culture vessel. So basically there are two different kind of the proteins. Those are the vitronectin and the fibronectin. And these two proteins allow the cell attachment to the bottom of the cell culture vessel. So basically this, these two proteins, it's secreted by the cells. And these two proteins, it allow the cells attachment. And next is the, poly, the polystyrene surface that... Uh, the cell culture vessel that we use that usually the polystyrene surface but this polystyrene surface are the hydrophilic polystyrene surface because hydrophilic polystyrene surface it promote cell adherence to the bottom and this is why the hydrophobic polystyrene surface it can be converted to the hydrophilic polystyrene surface by some kind of chemical modification and this kind of hydrophilic polystyrene surface it allow cell attachment proteins like vitronectin and the fibronectin in the serum that uh, that present in the serum and hydrophilic polystyrene surface it allow this kind of protein to spread on the vessel bottom and then cell can it can easily adhere to the bottom of the cell culture vessel so next is the trypsin and the cell trypsinization this is very much important when you do the cell culture so then you need to keep this kind of points that I'm going to discuss here so first you need to know that what is trypsin so trypsin is basically a member of the serine protease family a proteolytic enzyme and uh, trypsin normally used to detach the adherent cell and monolayers and also the there are some uh, optimum activity of the trypsin is normally 37 degrees centigrade and also if you trypsinize the cells for long term and also high concentration trypsin that can damage the cells so here you see in this figure that when you trypsinize uh, for longer time uh, with higher concentration then your cells it turns to the round shape that indicating that cells are dying so we need to keep in mind that you need to maintain the optimum concentration and also the optimum time to trypsinize. How does how does trypsin work? So this is very also important. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, there are two proteins those are responsible for the cell attachment. Those are the vitronectin and the fibronectin. So basically, the trypsin it it uh, works in the C terminal of the vitronectin or the fibronectin and then it can cleavage this attachment site so trypsin works here in the c terminal and also trypsin it cleaves the c terminal site of the lysine and arginine and breaking down the vessel adhering proteins and allowing easy resuspension during cell harvesting so next is the role of the edta in trypsin so as, as you know that the edta in most of the cases is included in the trypsin so here you need to know that how what is the role of the edta in the trypsin so basically the presence of the calcium and magnesium in the cell culture we need to, we need to know that what is the role of the calcium and magnesium in the cell culture so basically and the presence of the calcium and magnesium determine cell cell and cell matrix interaction and aggregation so this magnesium and calcium it present in the cells in the cell culture that promote cell cell interaction and also cell aggregation but we don't need this kind of cell aggregation and cell cell interaction so we need normally the single single cell after the subculture right so this is why we need to get rid of calcium and magnesium so here the edta plays the vital role vital role so the edta is the mainly the chelating agent and this edta it bind with the calcium and it forms 
calcium EDTA or magnesium EDTA. So here as you see in this figure that calcium or magnesium it form chelate with the EDTA. So as a result the free calcium and free magnesium it reduced in the cell culture and then this kind of cell cell interaction or cell aggregation are inhibited. So this is why EDTA it frequently included in the in the trypsin to form chelate with the divalent cations like calcium or magnesium that weaken this kind of cell cell interaction. So next is the uh, we need to know that why does phenol red include in the commercial trypsin. So we sometimes we can notice that we notice that uh, there are some kind of phenol red included trypsin are available in the market. But why this kind of phenol red included? We need to know that. So the trypsin has optimum activity at the pH range from 7 to 9. And at this range, phenol red inclusion gives the solution a pink color. So we need to know that when the when there is a pink color, then the trypsin is active, right? But there are some kind of environmental condition because of this kind of environmental condition, the pH of the trypsin may turn acidic, and that can change the color to orange color. And this kind of acidic pH, when it turns to acidic pH then this kind of pH activity it reduced. So this kind of orange color trypsin it normally it does not work properly. But by adjusting the this kind of orange color pH if we change uh, this kind of pH and we restore the pH with the sodium hydroxide then the trypsin activity also could be restored. So this is why phenol red it's it included uh, in the commercial trypsin that you can visually you can check that trypsin is active or not. And also there are some kind of concentrated trypsin. So basically when you, when you have 10x or 20x trypsin then you can you can dilute it with the 1x PBS to maintain the pH and osmotic balance. So next is the working concentration and the temperature of the trypsin. So as I mentioned earlier that 37 degree temperature is the optimum temperature and for strongly adherent cell lines trypsin of 2.5% to 0.25% this concentration need be used and the pre warm or incubation at 37 degree centigrade is required temperature for the trypsin. So next is the how to inactive the action of the trypsin after digestion. So serum contains uh, some kind of proteins that is the alpha 1 antitrypsin that stops the digestion and inhibits the trypsin. So basically this, uh, this alpha 1 antitrypsin it present in the serum this is the protease inhibitor so after trypsin digestion when the cell properly digested then you, you, know, you just need to add the complete media or the serum to stop the digestion. So next is the source of the trypsin. So the trypsinogen that is the inactive form that is secreted in the pancreas and by the, uh, by the enzyme enterokinase it converted to the trypsin that is the active form and that carried out in the duodenum that is the a part of the small intestine. So this trypsin it hydrolyzes the protein and also there are major source of the trypsin is the porkin or pig that is available either in the lipolase powder or as a solution. But also to avoid the animal or microbial products, the recombinant bovine trypsin that is the free from any animal or human sources. This kind of recombinant bovine trypsin is produced in transgenic corn plant. So this is all about the trypsin and trypsinization and I hope this video will be helpful. If you like this video kindly hit the like button, share it and if you have any queries kindly write in the comment section. Thanks for watching.